know it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I apologize if the fan in the background is too loud. I hope it's not because I am burning up as you can see. I don't know um, if my blood pressure is up or what's going on, but as I was voting yesterday, this started happening. I felt the heat come to my face and it hasn't left. Um, I don't know what's going on. I've also been very aggravated uh, today. I don't know why either. I don't really have anything to be upset about. But I was just thinking about uh, how people deal with things, different situations, um, how differently people think, and I think it's it's really in perspective. You know, if, if you've had a bad day, first of all, what's a bad day? What is a bad day? Let's say you got fired from your job. Are you going to get so angry and cause a scene that they're never going to hire you back and they're going to have to call the police? Or are you going to go home and think that you can't do anything right and you're, you're never going to equal to anything? Are you going to go home, you know, be sad for a while and move on? And I really think... People focus too much on bad things. They, you know, I always look at the good in everything. Even when I was diagnosed with cancer, like, <laughs> okay, here's a short uh, little tidbit of information about me. Um, I had been sick for a while, and I had never been really a person that ever got sick. And so when I got sick, like, I just had a normal cold. No, it, well, I thought it was the flu. And it just wouldn't go away. Like, it just... I stayed sick for a long time. And... I fought with my doctor... For I, almost a year. Back and forth of... You know, something's not right. Um, I know there isn't... There's something wrong... I was having pain in my left side and it was the pain was getting so bad that I, I couldn't eat anything um, I lost 45 pounds in a month and the doctor just wanted to give me pain pain medication and um, antibiotics and then she would tell me that I need to eat probiotics because the antibiotics probably messed up my stomach. And, um, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, holy crap, I forgot what I was talking about. I mean, I kind of know, but I don't remember where I left off. Uh, oh, probiotics and all that stuff. Okay, so... About a year of this, going back and forth to the doctor, getting, you know, I'm just messed up. She's just trying to push pain medication. Um, my family, in the meantime, was like, you know, oh, maybe it's food allergies. You know, try cutting this out, try cutting that out. And literally, I got to the point where all I could deal with was water. Like, I couldn't eat anything without being in so much pain. At one point, I was in so much pain, I actually had a friend of mine take me to the emergency room because I was literally, I couldn't see. I, I was in so much pain that I had, like, my vision was going out. And um, I was in the hospital for a few hours in the emergency room and... Even then, the doctor's like, you know, just trying to push pain meds. And I said, no, I'm not taking any pain medication until I'm actually seen by a doctor. 
and then I will take pain meds. I want to be able to tell the doctor exactly where it hurts and you know if he touches the spot I want it to still hurt. I don't want the pain meds to dull the pain. Um, and also at that time you know they had seen that I had just gotten Vicodin filled like a week before that so I think they just thought that I was looking for drugs honestly um, and The doctor came in and he basically brushed off my pain and he was like there's nothing over there that would be painful there's nothing on your left side of your body that should be that painful you're, you're not pointing it anywhere that that says you know that there should be pain so we have to do an MRI and it's gonna take a long time and I also, you know, I had told him too, I said, at this point, I was showing other symptoms. I was, when I had a bowel movement, there was a lot of blood. And I was 33 when all this was happening. And he says, I have to do a public exam because... You know, just, just to make sure that, you know, the blood's not coming from there and the pain's not coming from there. And I'm like, I'm 33 years old. I think I know the difference. But whatever. Do whatever you have to do. So he did that. And um, I'm not going to be as grass as I would be a normal person like if I were talking to one of my friends there's a lot into the story that has some funny things that I said to the doctor because I am very blunt <laughs> and uh, and I made him blush because he, he made me angry um, so I did the MRI they found nothing nothing I went home and I was so upset because I felt in my mind that maybe I was losing my mind and I really wasn't in as much pain as I thought and maybe I'm just stressed out and maybe it really is some kind of food or you know whatever I, I, I just I felt defeated I felt just really low and then I remembered like I always tell myself it's okay to get upset but you can't stay there you, you can't wallow in that you have to pull yourself out of it and so I did and I went back to the doctor I had a follow-up appointment um, and I told this doctor you know this is what's going on I told well, I told my doctor this is what's going on I am now bleeding rectally and the pain is so severe that I had to go to the emergency room and she's like I, this was the intern that I got it wasn't even my doctor that I got it was the intern and she's like what do you want me to do and I said I want a colonoscopy she's like we normally don't order those for someone your age with no history of cancer no history of anything you've been healthy she goes I don't know if your insurance will cover it and I'm like I don't care I don't care just order the test so she then says well I'm gonna have to do a rectal exam to make sure that's where the blood's coming from I looked at her and I said what is with you doctors I am 33 years old do you not think I know the difference? Like, and again, I'm like, whatever. Do whatever you have to do. You know, I can't do whatever you have to do. Get me into this colonoscopy. So she gets me in, you know, she, she orders it. And then 
I remember it taking a really long time in the in the hospital that they wanted me to go to. Oh my lord. It was known around in that area. It was known around as if you went into that hospital, you don't come out. It was so dirty and so bad. You know, I lived close to Detroit. So this this hospital was between me and Detroit and it was it was bad. Bad. Nasty hospital. And I'm like and, and the people were incompetent like I kept I'm trying to schedule this thing and, and I'm telling her like this needs to be done and she's just like I don't know the lady didn't know what she was talking about she didn't know what she was doing she even said to me she's like I'm kind of confused I don't know what I'm doing and I'm like oh my god so I asked her I said can I just can I just take this order that I have from my doctor and go anywhere and she said yeah if you have the order then yes you can take it and go anywhere so I called St. Joe's in um, well, I'm just going to say in Michigan. I called St. Joe's and made an appointment. And uh, then I think I went to Alabama for a little while to visit family. And during that trip, I fell 20 feet with a ladder. I came within an inch on both sides of my body from pipes that were sticking up out of the ground, piercing my, one would have went right through my uh, side of my rib cage and my lungs, and the other one would have went through my chest. And uh, it, it actually, I hit the one, with this elbow. See that scar right there? You kind of see it shining. I hit the one pipe with this arm, this elbow, and it cut my cut my arm open. So I go to you know, they had they called nine one one because I got up. Um, the blood was rushing out of my arm. I cut it pretty deep. Um, I also hit my head, my face, really hard. I mean, it almost instantly bruised because I, when I fell, I basically tucked myself onto the ladder. And I don't even know like how I did this so fast because I don't remember it even. I don't remember even realizing that the ladder was falling. I just remembered that. I, I don't know. My brain just hold myself in on the ladder as close as I could, you know, on it so I wasn't hanging over it. And when I hit the ground, I was on top of the ladder and I, you know, hit hit the ladder and then bounced back up and I rolled over. <laughs> this is my attitude. This is how I deal with things. Excuse the language, but I rolled over and my brother and my stepdad are standing over me and I was like, get me the fuck off the ground. Because my first thought was, if you stay here, you're going to die. If you stay right here and you don't move, you're going to die. And because I I knew that I was in, I was hurt more than my pain was, you know, allowing me to feel. And I stood up and walked about 10 feet and passed out. So they called 911. Um, I went to the hospital. I was there five hours, and in that five hours, I call her the burnt Barbie nurse because that's what she looked like, a burnt Barbie, but not like a burnt old Barbie, just lots of bright pink makeup, or bright blue and then pink uh, lipstick, and she had, she looked like she had been in the tanning bed every day for 30 minutes her entire life and she was mean and they wouldn't let me get up because they didn't know if I had broke my neck um so they they made me you know I had this collar on and I went um yeah they took me back for x-rays and everything that but they wouldn't let me up until the doctor saw the x-rays 
because they were like, you know, if you if you broke your neck, you could, you know, paralyze yourself and blah, blah, blah. And I had to go to the bathroom really bad. Really, really bad. And so this nurse brings in a bedpan, makes me push my own bottom up off the bed so that she can put this bedpan under me doesn't put a sheet over me or anything and she's like okay you can go now and I'm like um no can you can you close the door and put a sheet on me and give me some privacy and she's like whatever sure so she does that I go to the bathroom and I'm calling her and finally she comes in and I'm like okay I'm done and at this time I can't get myself back up like I am so exhausted that I just can't and they've pumped me full of meds now and now my body is hurting really really bad even though I had a ton of pain meds in me I was hurting everywhere and um, she I told her I said can you please just have someone else come in here and help you I just I can't I can't get up I can't move myself anymore and she tried to do it by herself and she dumped the entire bedpan on me. So now I'm laying there in my own urine for the next hour and a half waiting for the doctor to come in and tell me that they didn't find anything wrong with me. I had no internal bleeding. I did not break anything. The only thing that they found was this cut. They wanted to put stitches on, but I refused because I was so mad and so embarrassed and so upset that I just wanted to leave. I said, just st just stick a steri strip on it and let me go. Like, I, I, I know I'm done. And so I left. And you want to know that I got a bill from that place? Five hours in the ER. $34,000. $34,000 and I fought with my insurance company for a year where the hospital said they would take my insurance company because I'm from Michigan this was in Alabama and my insurance company was like yes we'll pay it and then one person then the hospital will say oh well Michigan insurance doesn't cover you out of state you have to have, you know, you, you have to have Alabama state insurance. And, and I was just like, so for a year, I fought with the insurance company back and forth with these people. The hospital, the insurance company, the hospital, the insurance company. To the point where the, the hospital then sent me to collections. And I still owe them $26,000. And that's a bill that I'll probably have to pay for the rest of my life. But I don't let it get to me. Don't let it. I can't dwell on that. So I come back home and have the colonoscopy. And I remember that was the best I had ever felt prepping for that colonoscopy when when it when all that I had in me and out was liquid it literally was the least time that I had ever the, 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 the longest time in almost a year that I had been in comfort because I had no food trying to process through me and I my friend uh, my maid of honor, one of my best friends, came with me. Well, she was my maid of honor later. I was actually single at the time. Um, but she went with me and I went back for the colonoscopy. And I just remember... I remember waking up and seeing her face. And she looked terrified. She was white as a ghost. And terrified and I'm like the hell is going on and the doctor leans over to me and says it 
sorry I can't finish the colonoscopy. We got 12 inches in and you have a mass that is blocking 90% of your colon. You're going to have to have surgery to have that removed. And uh, that's all he said to me. And he walked away. And again, my thought in my head was, don't stay here. Don't stay in this spot. Don't stay in this feeling. And the next thing out of my mouth was, I looked at my friend and I said, you know, she's already crying. And I said to her, well, at least it isn't food allergies. Trying to lighten the mood. I think that's as much as I'm going to say. If This is already 21 minutes, so um, I'll finish the rest of it. The rest of the story. But that was the beginning of a very long journey. But my point I was trying to get to that I took a very long time to get to was... Bad things happen to everybody. Everyone. You have to pull yourself out of it. If there even is just a small glimpse of something positive and something that bad has happened to you, focus on that one little piece of light. I promise you that light will get bigger and bigger and bigger and you'll be okay be okay don't focus on the negative don't stay in it don't wallow in it get out of it don't stay there you'll be okay the next time you have a bad day next time something bad happens just remember those words don't stay here and focus on any light there is any light. Make a light. Point out any kind of good that could come from that situation. And focus on that and pull yourself out. Alright, I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm on the brink of crying and I told myself I could make it through this without crying so far. No tears. It's a little watery. No tears. And that's how I knew I was ready to share this with you. It's because I'm not bawling. And I'm not crying. So I'm going to go. And I will share more of my story. The rest of it in another video. It's a long story. A lot of crap happened. But I'm still smiling. I'm still doing good. You know. I have God on my side. And... You know, if you're not religious, that's okay. I, I'm not here to judge you. If you don't believe in God, that, you know, I, I'm not a judge. I don't, he's the only one I worry about judging. Me. And I let him do the judging of other people. So, when I say that, I hope you don't get offense when I say, you know, I have God on my side. I truly believe that. I, I truly do. But, okay, I'm gonna go. Good night. It's like, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, what day is this? Wednesday. I got a lot of stuff to do the rest of the weekend. So, I'm gonna go. And please leave your comments below. Um, let me know. Uh, where else would you leave your comments? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed now. Let me know, you know. In brief, what helps you get out of a bad situation? What helps you get yourself out of a bad situation? Um, just let me know in the comments. And please like my video. And if you think of anybody that can benefit from what I just said, let them know. Share the video with them. Or, you know, whatever. Tell them about it. Use my words. Um... 
you can help somebody, choose to help somebody. If you get a choice to treat someone who's treating you like crap the same way, choose to walk away. Don't do it. Walk away. Alright guys. Good night. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for all the subscribers that have come to the channel. I try to do as many things. I have random, very random videos. But now it's like almost going on 26 minutes. So I'm going to go. I've said that like five times. Alright, bye.